Yeah, I just wanted to share a few experiences with y'all, right? Y'all know that I grew up in Christianity, right? I used to go to a church right in Claxton Bay there. They used to have long three-hour services on a Sunday, right? So a couple of experiences stood out to me and they stuck with me from attending church, right? And one of them, I would say, is I was in church as probably in my teenage years, you know, early teens, I'm talking about probably 13 or so. And I stood there and watched as the people in church, they worshipped the Trinity, right? So one moment, they would say, we worship you, Father. And the next moment, they would say, we worship you. They, they would say that they worship the Son. And then the next moment, they would say they worship the Holy Spirit. And they would bring up the different attributes of these different entities each time they, they, they praise them and so they went switching among these three different entities and at that young age I thought to myself what am I to do because I, I know there's only one God based on my, my, my reading of the Old Testament and whatnot the Old Testament repeatedly say that, says there's one God so I'm wondering what am I to do is it that if I praise the Son the father would get jealous right is it that when i praise the father the holy spirit will get jealous you know so at that point in time i i thought you had to praise each of them equally as not to get the other one jealous you know that that was how i reconciled with that whole idea of praising multiple beings right whom they say is one god if if, if they are saying that all three is one god you know then are you supposed to praise the tree equally? Or is it okay to praise one more than the other? Or one and don't praise the other? You know, so this was the confusion I was in. Standing there witnessing people committing what I now know to be polytheism and shirk. Right? So it's something that you never really understand as a Christian. You are told repeatedly, lean not unto your own understanding, don't question it, just believe, have faith. Walk by faith, not by sight. You know, so there are grown people in the 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s. There are grown people who live their entire life like that, not questioning it. And they just believe whatever they're told. And they leave whatever they're not told about this Trinity doctrine. Right? It was only until university years that I began to research it. I began to look up the history behind the Bible and this whole Trinity doctrine and all of that. You know, another incident that stood out to me was when I went to church in Pinal. There was a visiting pastor from the United States. And I remember it clearly. Right? I was, I was one among the, con uh, among the congregation observing. I like to do this a lot. People say that when I was younger, I was quiet and used to appear spaced out. It's because I was observing. I observe a lot. So I observed the behavior of the congregation. They were in a frenzy. They were the beck and call of this foreign preacher. And there was a point towards the end of the service where he said, give me that last hundred dollars. <laughs> I'm not mocking. I'm just repeating exactly as the man said to try to convey the hype. Right? That blue hundred dollars. <laughs> Dig deep in your pocket. <laughs> Put it in the basket. <laughs> And so the guy went on. You know, they, they call that hooting. The way how they, they speak. You find that pastors speak this way. In order to sort of embellish and, and sort of color what it is they're saying. Right? So the guy repeated this another time. And then you hear the guy on the guitar strummed up a beat. Right? Dum, 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 dum. And the guy, the pastor started to sing it now. He said, give me that last hundred dollars, that blue hundred dollars, dig deep in your pocket, put it in the basket. And he keep, he keep repeating while the people danced and, and they started to shout and get in a frenzy. And I saw the Christians begin to form a line in the aisle and they were waving their hundred dollar bill in the air. And boy, whoo, while the pastor sing, give me that last hundred dollars, that blue hundred dollars, dig deep in your pocket. Put it 
in the basket and the guitar man kept playing doom, 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 doom. give me that last hundred dollars that blue hundred dollars and I stood there observing I wasn't dancing and I sure wasn't pulling out my hundred dollars but I just stood there observing what appeared to be the fleecing and the robbery of this congregation you know and I was I was in shock I was like this can't be what church and, and religion is about here are these people getting fleeced out of their money and they, they, they are excited about it right whereas a, a gunman would come and and hold up a gun to the population to the congregation this man is, is, is basically bamboozling them with, with song and frenzy and they were just giving up their money to this man you know and, and it was always a case of enriching the preacher I remember this they, they used to have past appreciation day and all these collections and whatnot for the preacher I remember that specifically right that I don't know if they try to offset his expenses but you find that these characters they, they sort of pursue self-enrichment rather than helping the poor and, and, and whatnot so those are two things that stood out to me from my experiences in church I just thought I would share these experiences but Alhamdulillah praise be to the one true God that in my later years I came to discover the truth that there is only one God that I do not have to split my worship among three entities three beings you know this is exactly what we're not supposed to do if you obey the first commandment God Almighty God said thou shalt have no other God before me right in Islam you do exactly that you pray directly to God all these other beings Jesus is a human the Holy Spirit is an angel they were both created by Allah and they serve Allah they submit to Allah that they are not equal to Allah in any way right when you come to learn this and you understand monotheism that there's only one God you know you're much at ease you pray to God and you do not have to worry no he can hear you he's not a flesh and bones human that has limited hearing or anything like that you know Allah can hear you right and you know he can answer your prayers he can address any matter in fact because he has power over all things and on the matter of the donations and, and, and whatnot, and the way these pastors seek to enrich themselves, I've never really encountered that. You find that, yes, we do give zakat and, and sadaqah and all these things. We give charitable donations. But it's all used for worthy causes. In Islam, there is a fear of God, whereby people would be wary of spending money on unscrupulous causes and whatnot. But I can't say the same about my experiences in Christianity you know regularly I would see pastors profiting of these sort of donations and, and drives where the congregation would really come together to enrich the pastor to buy him vehicles and and, and whatnot and this is something unheard of I, I never saw anything like this where people would specifically get together for the enrichment of, of a religious figure Right? In Islam, people do things for the sake of Allah. And they seek the reward from Allah. Right? So you find that even during this whole month of Ramadan, you find every evening you go, you get food to eat. Right? Some of, a lot of the times it's catered food as well. You get food to eat to break your fast. And nobody asks you for any payment. They all do it for the sake of Allah. People donate freely for the sake of Allah to help the poor and whatnot. The unfortunate people within the, the masjid. Or should I say... The miskeen, those who do not have as much wealth as others, right? They are well taken care of because the donations, it is the zakat, they go towards the poor, right? Not towards a religious leader for his enrichment at the expense of the poor, you know? This is exactly the sort of thing that Jesus, quote unquote, got in trouble for in the Bible, where he told, you know, those religious figures back then about turning the church into a money-making thing. So it's just something to put up on.